Hey there, scientists. Today, you are going to be talking about animal senses, and you will be able to describe how animals use sense receptors, how they process information, how animals use perceptions and memories to guide their actions. It's all about senses today. Let's do this, scientists. <music> That is right, we are talking about animal senses. I am Mr. Steyer and this is Mr. Steyer's classroom. Welcome back, scientists. So, when we start talking about senses, the first thing that we need to do is we have to remind ourselves what are the senses that we're talking about. So just really quick, what I need you to do is I need you to whisper into your hands the five senses that you can think of. Whisper into your hands, do it. Now, let them float away. Okay, here we go. So yes, when we are talking about senses, like if we're talking about eating an apple, what senses would we use when we eat an apple? Well, we're probably gonna use taste because we can taste if it's sweet. Uh, depending on what type of apple it is, we might hear a crunch. And then we're using our sense of hearing. We're using our sense of taste as we eat it. Maybe we can feel the smooth outside of the apple as we hold it. So we can hear it, we can taste it, we can feel it. We can see what color the apple is. So we can hear the crunch, we can feel the smooth outside of the apple, we can see the color of its apple skin, we can taste how sweet it is, and we probably can also like smell the smell of the apples. So we can use all five of our senses in order to be able to know what the apple is, what it tastes like. We, we use all of those things so we know that an apple is an apple. Well, today we're gonna talk about how animals use those same senses in order to be able to process information, their perceptions, their memories, and how their senses guide their actions. <clears throat> so we've talked about the structures of animals in the past. We talked about structures of plants in the past, and now we're gonna use that so we can understand their animal senses. So let's look at this clouded leopard right here in front of us. When you look at this, image and you observe like a scientist what are things that you observe here now again look closely look carefully i mean the first thing that i observe with my eyes is i look at this clouded leopard and it does not look happy it it does not look happy at all so what other things can I maybe imagine that I could observe with my other senses? Maybe I can imagine hearing this cat hiss. Maybe I can imagine hearing this clouded leopard growl. Maybe I can, I can imagine like feeling it's like hot, angry breath as it opens its mouth like that. There is a lot of things that I can look at here. And maybe this leopard is protecting itself or maybe it's getting ready to attack. Those are things I can't totally infer with all of the information I have here. But I definitely can see how this cat is using its senses. The clouded leopard is a fierce cat that lives in the forests of Southeast Asia it uses its senses to learn about its surroundings. Each sense receptor responds to a particular kind of information and sends signals to the brain. The brain processes all of those signals so they have meaning for this cat. So we're learning here how this clouded leopard uses its sense receptors in order to process information and have perceptions and memories that are guiding its actions. What I can tell here is that there's a good chance that this clouded leopard, whatever it's interacting with, 
it's done it in the past. It knows how to react. It knows what it needs to do. It knows what it needs to do to either protect itself or be ready to strike. The clouded leopard uses its keen sense of hearing to learn when its predators and prey are nearby. Okay, so now we know how it's using its hearing. It's listening for predators and for prey. For example, the sounds of a ground squirrel's movements travel through the air as vibrations. When those vibrations enter the cat's ears, sound receptors send signals to the cat's brain. The brain interprets those signals as the noises made by a ground squirrel. The cat uses that perception and its memories of hunting other animals to catch that ground squirrel. We're going to look now at these captions and find out how the clouded leopard's other senses aided in processing information. <clears throat> so, first question we're looking at here when we look at these other senses is, how do the sense receptors help the clouded leopard? So we're going to look at each of these individual senses, hearing, sight, smell, feel with the whiskers, and taste to learn more about what these sense receptors are doing. Most animals have sense receptors that allow them to see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. Sometimes, like you've heard of taste receptors, and those are called taste buds. How are signals from these sense receptors given meaning? Well, we learned earlier in our reading that all of these senses are given meaning by the brain. Everything is being sent to the brain, so the brain knows what's happening. So let's look at the clouded leopard's ear. We know that it could hear that ground squirrel, Sound receptors in the ear respond to vibrations in the air, causing signals to travel to the brain. The brain perceives them as different sounds. So again, that processing happens inside of the clouded leopard's ears. Sight. Light receptors in the clouded leopard's eyes respond to light and send signals to the brain. The brain then processes those signals, letting the clouded leopard know what it is seeing. And again, all of that information is being sent to this cat's brain. Smell. Smell receptors in the cat's nose are sensitive to chemicals in the air. Those receptors send signals to the brain, which interprets them as different odors. So the nose can smell it, and then the brain tells the cat what all the smells are. Taste. Taste buds on the clouded leopard's tongue respond to chemicals in the food, sending signals to the brain. The brain interprets those signals as different flavors. Mmm, flavors. And then touch. When the clouded leopard's whiskers brush against an object, touch receptors send signals to its brain, which processes them. This lets the cat know that its whiskers are touching something. So every one of these five senses, those sense receptors inside of there are sending information to the cat's brain. Now, what's happening in that brain? Well, in that brain, past experiences help the cat know and associate a sound with a certain animal or a hearing with a certain animal. Or again, they can see how that animal is moving and they can recall from their memory of other experiences, how would you catch this animal? How do I stay away from this predator? How do I grab this prey so that I can eat and survive, have the food and energy I need? All right, so what we need to do here is we have to describe how the clouded leopard uses its sense of smell to learn that a ground squirrel is nearby. Earlier we knew that it could hear that there was a ground squirrel. 
feel those vibrations. What about smell? Well, scent receptors in the leopard's nose respond to chemicals in the air. We talked about that earlier. It could smell the chemicals from that ground squirrel, send those signals to the brain. The brain processes those signals as the odor of a ground squirrel, then the cat can combine that with what they heard and what they see. And at this point, they probably can remember what a ground squirrel tastes like and they want that thing. So animals have exceptional sense receptors. All mammals, all animals do. But when we talk about this, there's so many animals that have unique and curious and interesting sense receptors that allow them to survive and to thrive in their environment. But let's think about this one for a second. If an animal's sense of sight is lost or weakened, it must rely and focus on other senses. So, this is a rhetorical question, which means I want you to answer it to yourself. You won't have to do it in the assignment, but I want you to give some time to think about it and answer it to yourself. If a clouded leopard, if their sight is weakened, which sense or senses would you expect the leopard to rely on more and why? I really want you to think about that. Again, it's a rhetorical question, so you're not going to answer it to anyone. You're going to answer it to yourself so that you can have a deeper thought about animal senses. If a clouded leopard's sight is weakened, which sense or senses would you expect the leopard to rely on more and why? Again, animal senses are amazing. They are super interesting and super unique. Like we know that different animals use different senses. We have heard about echolocation for dolphins in the past. Um, we know that even humans, some humans can use the, <clears throat> the way that their voice bounces off of things or sound bounces off of things in order to find their way down the street if maybe they have a, a visual impairment. And we know that senses can become heightened in different situations, and they are a fascinating thing to study. So I encourage you to watch some of the videos this week if you want to know more about animal senses and learn some things that are maybe surprising, new, or different. Your big job this week is to describe how animals use sense receptors, how they use them to process information, and how they use sense receptors and their perceptions and memories to guide their actions. So the work that you're going to do this week is you are going to do some fill in the blank work and we'll, we'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, so you're going to do some fill in the blank work where you're going to take the words that you know and make certain that you match them in their correct places to prove that you understand these concepts. And then <clears throat> you're also going to have to explain how a clouded leopard's brain is related to its senses. And we talked about that a ton today. If you forgot how the brain is connected to all these senses, rewind, watch this whole video again. The brain is a huge component in how animal senses are used. Thanks for being here.